To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 4, Location, 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 Second Creation Story, Part B. We understand instinctively that each culture creates its own religion according to its own context, in terms of politics, geography, and biodiversity. The Mongols were nomads on the Eurasian steppes, so their god was the sky god that followed them everywhere. In contrast, Japanese Shintoism is as local as it gets, a tree, a hill, a river. Today we might look at the Bible as a universal text, but nothing could be farther from the truth. This will be very apparent in this episode, when we look at the geographical setup in the second creation story. Before the writers of the Bible put pen to paper, the region has seen civilizations and empires rise and fall. The Sumerians and then the Akkadians and Ur and the Babylonians and Hittites and Assyrians and Egypt was there all along. The people we're focusing on were simple folk living in the mountains and the deserts of an unimportant spot in the Western Near East. Think of the world they're describing as if it's a different planet. Arrakis, or Tatooine, or ancient Mesopotamia. Their source material and cultural inspirations are not our own. Their audience is not a captive audience, nor are they coming into this as blank slates. There are rules to this genre. In the same way as every contemporary writer of a rom-com knows he has to adhere to the format and consciously or subconsciously react to every meaningful rom-com that has come before. So was it the case for the people who wrote the second creation story of the Bible. Hi, Omri. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Since it's the second uh, creation story and we contrast it, of course, to the first creation story, mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to mind here, to me, is the, the locality of their message. Yes, they're describing their surroundings in the story. Check out our, we- uh, our website, uh, podcastofbiblicalproportions.com, and there'll be pictures uh, of uh, maps and stuff. Anyway, so Mesopotamia, that's uh, in the middle of the rivers. Mm-hmm. Mesos Potamos, mm-hmm. like uh, the Potomac River. So this it's is a like very orientalistic name. <laughs> it's a name that the Greeks gave to the Mesopotamians. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. those guys between those the guys, rivers. Yeah. Even though between the rivers, this is historically where human civilization rose mm-hmm. you had the it's called the cradle of civilization, the cradle of civilization. Yeah. And you, you, uh, whether in china you have the yellow river in uh, in india you have the indus valley in egypt you have the nile river because it's the basis of a, an agricultural kingdom when you secure the river and uh, take hold of the river you have access to the most fundamental thing in agricultural society exactly access to unending waters yes that it makes sense that <laughs> between <laughs> yeah. the rivers rose the greatest kingdoms so anyone cool. who played civilization or uh, <laughs> <laughs> age of empires <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay so it all starts with the garden of eden that magical garden up in the sky in the clouds it's not in the sky it's a very specific place here on earth on the ground where it's basically either in South Yemen or either in the Fertile Crescent, but it, it is very clear that they don't mean a magical place in the sky. Yes, they, they say it's east of Eden. Exactly. Eden is a, is a place. Now, whatever, South Yemen, there's a yeah, place Adam, called Yemen. There's a city Eden. named Aden, yeah. Okay, from the Garden Flow, four major rivers, rivers yeah. in their, on their planet. These are the, the rivers on our planet. Two of the rivers, we know where, where, what rivers they are. It's the Euphrates, Prat, mm-hmm. Hidekel, Tigris. Mm-hmm. But the two others, there's the one that goes to... Uh, like the one that goes to the Havilo end, where there is gold. It's called the Pishon. It's like the audience already knows that in that land, that faraway land, the Havila land, there's gold. It's like a modern uh, storyteller uh, will tell about a place that's called Saudi Arabia. There floats the oil. It's like something that is mm. not only local in its ge- geographical right, placing, right. also by the uh, common knowledge that yes. there's gold over there. Yes. And the storyteller even expand on this, expands on this point when he says the uh, ivory is there and the good uh, whatever. Stones, the gemstones. Good gemstones. So the fact that 
there's a specific place inside this story yes makes it very local geographically and the proof here is the fact that they mentioned like a place that everybody's supposed to know yes and there's also the Gihon that goes to Kush the kingdom of Kush like mm-hmm. the big kingdom like to the south of Egypt which probably means Ethiopia so all these places all these cradles of civilization it's God that created them this mm-hmm. Yahweh God he mm-hmm. created the, the garden mm-hmm. for Adam so we we might not come from here we come from another place that is a great mm-hmm. place and their great place the the reason that they're great is because our God uh, gave them the rivers <laughs> between the rivers so think about all this for a moment the, the, the people of Israel, the Hebrews, they live in Judea. Jerusalem is their capital uh, at some uh, points in time. Mm-hmm. And they're not telling the, the geography of where they live. Because all these rivers, not, <laughs> yeah. none of them come here yeah. to Israel. Yeah. And they're saying, we came from the east. We came from there. We're yeah. not even locals. Yeah. This is so weird. Yeah. As a creation story that tells, we are not from here. Yeah. We are not from here. We are from, uh, from uh, some other place. Yeah. It's weird, but it also um, kind of makes sense. Because it is well known that this, this place we, uh, that we are living here, in the, the land of Israel or whatever, the Levant, it's sort of like a passageway between empires, between the Egyptian Empire and the Assyrian and the Babylonian, the Sumerian before them, the Persian after them, whatever. So there's not a lot of street cred to this place. Right, not at all. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, Nothing, no street cred at all. It gives you no pride <laughs> that your origins right. come from right. here when the most known and well-respected and f- most famous empires are not yes. originated in here. Yeah. So Maybe it's like a, a, in, a, in America back in the day before it became a nation. I don't know exactly. Like yeah, I'm from <laughs> France. <laughs> yeah. Not local. France yeah. is better. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's some kind of a foreshadowing here because the people who wrote it themselves, according to scholars, their origin is much souther than the Levant era. It's like uh, between Sinai and modern-day Egypt. A desert people so maybe there's some kind of an ancient memory that we are not from this place but also some kind of a foreshadowing to consider this place the promised land you can't uh, have this promised land without you being migrated to it ah okay without you it's not a promise yeah Okay, but I, I know that uh, biblical scholars uh, say that, uh, and also it's in the story, they came, uh, so the garden is in the east, yeah. to the east of the land of Israel. So it's not in, so it's not, it's not in Jerusalem, Mm-mm. the garden. No. It's in the east, because that's where the good things came from. And, and also, if you tell them that uh, the garden is in Jerusalem, and the, the people that you tell the story are in Jerusalem probably, or in the local area. It's kind of a, a lie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they can check. They can say no. It used to be. It used to be. It's not anymore. It, we built the it city around it. Transcends the real garden to like a transcendent yes. garden. Ah, it becomes an, uh, a little I mean, bit abstract. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And also, the people who lived there at the time, they knew that they were low lo- uh, not locals because you had Canaanites. Yeah. There. Yeah. So you can't be associated with the Canaanites, and the Canaanites were more advanced than them. Richer, richer. Yeah, they had uh, they had their own gods. Yeah, so uh, we're not with the locals, so we have to make it uh, a grand story that us that we started in a gra- in a better place than this place. This is a shitty place, and Come it's a, a reoccurring theme. It, it, we, we talk about it when we reach the Abraham stories and even uh, Moses. Hmm. They are all leaders of a people that came from a more. Uh, mm-hmm street cred place like the <laughs> like empire cred yeah the place where the persian later persian or babylonian or assyrians that where abraham came and moses came from egypt so yeah it's a, like a reoccurring theme yeah 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 so okay so let's start talking a little bit about the uh, about the area let's just like bring like give the like, bird's eye view of the geopolitical context when they started to come up with these stories mm-hmm. So we're talking about the, the late Bronze Age collapse mm-hmm. that saw a lot of empires, almost all of them, mm-hmm. and a lot of, like almost all major cities were destroyed yeah. in a relatively short time, short yeah. time uncon- uncomprehensibly yeah. short time, like 50 years. 50 years, everywhere. Like everywhere. Some say because of the sea people, mm-hmm. 
and uh, probably the Philist- Philistines that they are mentioned in the Bible or see people mm-hmm. that uh, in Egyptian sources. Also you have like droughts and droughts, climate change, climate change and uh, the interdependency of all mm-hmm. uh, of all the empires. Okay, th- this is another topic. We don't have yeah. to, to go into too much detail. The But main thing here yeah. it, the, it was uh, the main takeaway from this is that civilizations existed. They had monuments of sorts. They had armies. organized armies mm-hmm. it's the bronze age because the most common material that they used uh-huh. to warfare was bronze and whatever and not iron not, not iron. later yeah yeah so it was like a civilization that was technologically less advanced mm-hmm. in some way and because of this less advancement in technology their entire economy their entire um Oh, economy com- collapsed. Yeah, their entire economy, their, their entire ecosphere collapsed yeah. really quickly Quickly, because yeah. it was on thin air almost. Right. It's, like, it's like the pandemic. It's like for them, 50 years, yeah. like the entire uh, this part of the, of the Mediterranean, the Eastern Mediterranean, boom. And the fact that it was so short means that there was a generation or, or a generation and a half that lived to see it in front of, of their eyes. Yeah. It wasn't like a gradual collapse yeah. that uh, one generation told the, the yeah. other generation, ah, back in the day it was uh, right. better and then the other, right. blah, 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 right. blah, blah, like blah, the blah. Roman Empire, yeah. right? the Western Roman Empire. Exactly. Yeah. It was a sudden collapse, so you could be 15 years old in the beginning of the collapse and maybe, if you're lucky, 60 years old at the end of the collapse. And right. the large empires that you knew by name right. no longer exist and, and the they fell Violently. Violently. <laughs> violently and the people that, uh, that are younger than you they don't know what the hell exactly. you're talking about yeah. they don't know what the hell yeah. you're talking about so our premise in this podcast is to try and read it in the local context yeah. okay so this was a quick rundown of the uh, local context and the that appears in this story the second creation story the very local Super local. I don't know how you can be a Chinese person and identify with this story. <laughs> It's true. very specific. An American? Yeah. <laughs> It's, this is not whatever. This is not uh, La Seine, mm-hmm. not the Rhine, not the Mississippi. No. This is the, the Hideke. Amazon. Not the Amazon. This is Hideke. This is a very... This is this river right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, people believe in weird stuff. It's not just uh, religion. Uh, so in the next episode, we're going to talk about the Garden of Eden, the Garden in Eden, the story, that story, Adam and Eve, the apple, yeah. the snake. Yeah. Oof, it's going to rock. I can't wait. Yeah. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.